Lisa Boldo, and what a joy to be with you. We've got, I've got a super special treat for you tonight. Oh my goodness, let me ask you, do you have a pet, a dog, a cat that you would like to see live longer and stronger here on the earth? Well, get ready, make sure that you share this out. This is going to bless your socks off. My guest tonight is a board certified um, holistic health counselor. She's a biblical health coach. She's a three-time best-selling author, and she is my favorite health expert. She's no stranger to the victorious life. You've seen her many times, but tonight we're talking about pet care. And joining us tonight is my good friend, Tony Jean Kulpinski. Tony Jean, welcome to the broadcast. Yay! Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> oh, what an honor. Tony Jean, every time you come on the broadcast, it's like it's like a, a it's like a selling of like a book books they're just sold out. I mean, it's it's amazing. People love you. And so thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. So you've got three best selling books and I've got them right here. And I believe, you know, for you watching and for those who will watch the replay, if you really want true health in your life, you'll definitely want to have these books if you don't have them already. Tony Jean's, uh, all three of these books are bestsellers on Amazon, starting with Stop Battling Disease and <laughs> Start Building Wellness. This was the first book that Tony Jean released, and it was sold out on Amazon the first day. Glory to God. Her next book, Stop Battling Disease and Start Building Wellness, The Cookbook. This is the accompanying book to the first book, but it's a cookbook with so many awesome recipes. This book has changed many of my own family members' lives as well. And now we're here to talk about tonight your your third best-selling book, and this is most recent. And it's it's not a long read, but boy, is it powerful. It's called Stop Battling Wellness, Your Guide to Extraordinary Pet Care. And oh my gosh, this book, again, if you've got a pet, that you love, this is a must. <laughs> so, Tony Jean, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you with these books. I remember when you first told me that you were going to be writing a book on pet care. And pet care is on the minds of so many people. We love our pets, we love them. So, um, Tony Jean, I wanna dive right in because we got a lot to cover. So, for those of you who haven't heard your personal story, you overcame cancer. And that's, you know, a lot of people struggle with that. So just tell us quickly your testimony um, and how you overcame it. Yes, well, prior to the cancer diagnosis, I had so many health issues because I was one of those young girls who had a weight issue and I would yo-yo diet, which meant I would lose and gain and lose and gain until finally I caused so much havoc on my body, digestive issues, migraines, panic attacks, thyroid issues, and then the diagnosis of cancer. Mm -hmm. I was working in a hair salon, breathing in a lot of chemicals, a lot of hair color, and there were actual traces of hair dye in my kidney. So I had what was wow. called second stage renal cell carcinoma. And I turned to the Lord, believe it or not, I grew up in the church, but I turned to the Lord because I, was, I had such a close relationship with God. And, but how to take care of our physical bodies and how to be well was something that was always pulling on my heartstrings even though we really don't learn so much of that in the church, you know, as a relation to food and healing. And, uh, you know, when you're scared and your body is broken down and you're, you're not well, yeah. most people do call out to the, the Lord. And I did just that. And he showed me scripture that had actual healing remedies on, on how to physically take care of our bodies, not just a spiritual way that we learn in the churches. And I started implementing principles, how to build wellness in my body. And right from the start, my body completely healed. And in almost 15 years on this journey, Lisa, I can honestly say I haven't even had a cold. I don't have sleep issues. God. I don't have any kind of body aches, pain aches, or nothing. I used to suffer from severe migraines. Mm -hmm. My body is in complete balance, and I am totally well. And I just give God all the glory. But I definitely took on a... 100% organic lifestyle, yeah. um, plant-based, and I'm not against any type of meat or anything, but for myself, that was the journey that I chose to take. And I live in great health every day as a leader of wellness and health to inspire others to do the same. 
Praise God, Tony Jean. That's what I love about you. You don't only speak, you live it. You are a beautiful role model for the picture of health. And your book is loaded with scripture. I, I, I love that. Uh, obviously, you know, most of all, and, you know, I'm very passionate about nutrition like you are. And to see you being such an inspiration and a role model. And I mean, I'm more like big picture. You're more like, you know, details and molecule atoms. Yeah. And it's, but it's awesome. And, uh -huh. and your energy is off the charts and it's just, but you do it in a way and you put things in a way that are simplistic for people to understand. And that's so important. That's why I love you. I love your books. So you know, your latest book. Oh my goodness. I love it. Stop battling disease. Start bet building wellness. Your guide to extraordinary pet care. Please tell us the inspiration behind the book and why you wrote it. I first want to say that God definitely wrote the books through me. I can't sit here and take all this credit. Um, I do believe I'm a vessel that has been led to my own story to gain great health and then to lead others to do the same. Cause that is the exact inspiration that brought me on this journey, you know, almost 15 years ago. But what, what inspired me to write the book is number one, I'm an animal lover. I, yeah. I, I, I love all animals. My favorite, I would say are dogs and horses, but I love all animals um, equally. Um, but with working as a natural path all these years and seeing humans get well, reversing all kinds of health issues, cancer, lupus, diabetes, yeah. um, you know, digestive disorders, which is things that I had and, and yeah. to live in perfect health and to see my clients one by one be healed. I said to myself, I think I need to do something with animals as well. God has blessed me with so much knowledge and wisdom on how to do that. And I was doing it with my own animals. So I was so inspired to write the book and just give people <coughs> that is really revealed in scripture as well and ancient principles on how to you know take care of our dogs and cats take care of our pets and um it's absolutely amazing what you can do holistically to get your your animals healthy and live free of arthritis and cancer and bone issues hip issues joint issues um you know animals nowadays are developing things like thyroid problems and um, digestive disorders, uh, dogs and cats are suffering from uh, things like, um, you know, mood swings and, and depression. And when I hear this, I said, I had to write a book and, 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 you know, help people how to, you know, get well with their pets as well. And it was just such an exciting journey writing the book. And it's a lot smaller than my other books, but um, it's an, it's an easy read and it has, it's stocked with a lot of information to get you on the, you know, road to a healthy furry animal. Amen. Amen. I might be showing up on the other side of the screen now. I just had a, a little coughing attack. I don't know if you could hear me or not, but sorry no. about that. You can. Okay. So Tony Jean, like human beings, our pets should also be eating healthy. Tell us, what does a healthy diet look like for a dog or a cat? Well, um, it's it's going to come to a surprise to a lot of the viewers right now because I, I believe that a lot of people, because when I take on pet patients, if you would, um, a lot of the owners are, they believe that the animals should just eat a ton of animal protein and not eat any grain and definitely no fruit and you know no vegetables or just very little, but it's just the opposite. And to get rid of some of the, or reverse or prevent some of the disorders I was just mentioning that I see a lot of animals plagued with today. Um, dogs and cats should both be eating definitely um, omnivorous diets where they eat from <coughs> both animal and plant kingdom, but they need to increase more of the plant kingdom. In other words, they do need to eat certain ancient grain, but in small quantities like real rolled oats or oatmeal, certainly not instant, um, millet, um, they can even have buckwheat, but they should be eating um, plenty of fruit uh, and fruit like watermelon and bananas wow. and berries. Berries are amazing for dogs and cats. Mm. Um, pears, apples, these are fantastic, especially if your animal is suffering from constipation. Um, a variety of vegetables and definitely grass-fed beef, grass-fed lamb, um, any kind of wild um, 
turkeys, wild turkeys, wild chickens, or pastured chickens, you know, chickens that are grazing on pasture, and even wild caught fish. So if, if an animal is just leaving, living on animal protein, they're going to wind up with gout. They're, gonna, they're not going to have healthy you know, circulation, healthy heart. So there has to be some kind of a balanced ratio where you do incorporate the fruits and vegetables as well and not just the animal protein. Wow, that was a wealth of information right there. Tell us, Tony Jean, what are some of the foods that dogs and cats should stay away from? Oh, that's a great question. I get asked that all the time. I'm going to start with grapes. So great. grapes, which will include uh, raisins and also uh, macadamia nuts. So there's different nuts that animals can have, but macadamia nuts, um, avocados, chocolate of all sources, which does include raw cacao. So they mm. can't have raw cacao either. And um, the reason why they have to stay away from these items is because there is actually a phytochemical in there that could be potentially toxic to the to the liver and the kidneys because see they have a different um physiology and anatomy than obviously we do as humans so that uh, phytochemical is healthy for us as humans but with a dog or a cat it could actually cause toxins in the kidneys and malfunctioning of that filtration system and then cause problems to the liver and can actually cause uh, serious infections that could even turn into sepsis and they would become auto intoxicated and and then or self poisoned and and die. But I mean, it would have to be larger quantities. So, but I I wouldn't introduce them to any of that at all, just to be safe. <clears throat> very okay. good. Wow. Now, Tony Jean, you're very specific in recommending supplements in your book. Why are supplements important in the lives of dogs and cats? Yes. Well, just like us as humans, and I always use the term hunter gatherer. Um, you know, hundreds of years ago, even thousands of years ago, before we became farmers in the 1800s, when we became a more industrialized civilization, we, you know, prior to that, we were actually hunter gatherers. So we went out in the wild and we hunter gathered our, not only our food, but our supplements as well. So as humans, we always took supplements from the inception of time, stuff like milk thistle or dandelion root, turmeric, um, ashwagandha, any type of um, plant in the wild was is today considered as a supplement and animals benefit in that aspect as well because they are also relying on their historical or ancestry diets because they need certain nutrition now most of uh dogs and cats today have been heavily vaccinated they're over medicated unfortunately so the liver becomes toxic so the, i believe more so that dogs and cats need milk thistle to help cleanse the liver from all these toxic, you know, the toxic overload that has been pumped into their bodies. So vitamin C, B complex, um, turmeric is wonderful. Even, you know, you don't want to wait until your animal is old and crippled if in the event they get to that stage. You want to kind of start them out that with these wonderful things when they're young and, you know, wild blueberries or wild blueberry powders. There's a lot that we can do, medicinal mushrooms, and I can go on and on with just supplements, but just to name a few. That's great. I know your your book is chock full of information. Like I said, really easy to understand. I love it. And I want to fix this. Well, I was going to try to fix the screen here for a moment because it's anyway. Are you a little lopsided? Yeah, it's, it's, hang on one second, everybody. And then one second. Um, there we go. Now we're back. Oh, we're back. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So here we go. Um, let me just ask you, because I know that a lot of times uh, humans have vegan lifestyles, but why would that be good for a dog or a cat or is it not good? Is it is it healthy for a cat or a dog to also have a vegan lifestyle? Why or why not? So, I mean, I'm going to say no, it's not healthy for long term. I believe that God made dogs and cats. There are animals that are actual plant eaters and they're some of the most strongest animals in the world. Um, I'm, I'm plant-based and here I am telling you that your dog or cat should not be. So you see, I'm not being biased here by any means. Um, we have to really think about scientifically what is healthy for the, the physiology and the anatomy of these animals. So a cat and a dog can use a, or can be fed a plant-based diet for a short period of time if they're trying to reverse certain health conditions and maybe they'll, you know, the liver, the kidneys are unable to filter out the, the heavy load of the animal proteins and just get plant proteins and they would do really well. But I don't believe that a plant-based diet 100% of the time would be beneficial to a dog or a cat. I believe there's definitely a balanced ratio 
of, of plant-based foods, like I mentioned a mo moment ago, fruits, vegetables, um, small amounts of ancient grain, like I mentioned, and definitely, um, you know, the wild type source uh, animal products. Um, so you can also do like, uh, there's seven days in a week. So you can do, you know, every day the way you would normally feed your dog or your cat, but creating balance. And then one day a week, just do a plant-based diet just to keep the Ooh. liver and the kidneys <clears throat> rejuvenating. And I do yeah. that with my own dog. So that's a great that's idea. Yeah. yeah. Give their the benefit of everything. And give their system a break too, right? Exactly. Very good. That exactly. makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So in, in your book, you do give a lot of, um, or you give sp specific recommendations for different companies. You give different companies that do produce very holistic, very, you know, food that's really good for the dog or the cat. Um, and then you also, um, you also talk about homemade pet food. So what are some recommendations that you would give? Uh, you also talk about healthy snacks, right? Yes. And treats for dogs or cats. What are some recommendations that you would give for, you know, healthy snacks for dogs and cats? A dual question. <laughs> um, so first and foremost, I, you know, people <clears> ask me through the years, even before I started working with pets or wrote a pet book, you know, what do I feed my dog or my cat? Yeah. You know, because your dog looks like, you know, their, their, their coat is so shiny. There's no, you know, hip issues or anything. Well, again, just like a human, we have to go back to ancient times and mm -hmm. the foods we're supposed to be eating. You know, God designed everything perfectly. He is yeah. the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it doesn't change. So with that said, I believe that the best source of dog or cat food is what you're going to make at home. There's not really anything on the market that's going to duplicate what you're making at home. And I did see a lot of- As long as it's healthy, you mean, <laughs> right? Yes, and that's where I'm going with this next part. So I do see a lot of companies that are coming out with either raw food or they're coming out with um, more human grade, which is where we should go. You know, when, when they said not to feed the dog on the table, that was actually wrong. Um, so, but the problem is, is the foods are not organic. The foods are genetically engineered. So all natural doesn't always mean it's healthy or fresh or what you're making at home, preparing for your animals. It's not necessarily healthy because you have the pesticides and the GMOs that are causing disease and all kinds of uh, health issues. So with that said, I would definitely say a well-balanced made food that you would prepare for your animals. And I do talk about that in the book. However, if you're looking for something maybe to supplement there are organic dog foods that are on the market as well as cat foods like organics or um, these are companies. There are um, you know, a variety of them, but you also don't wanna just continue to give gibble. You don't wanna continue, you can give a little bit, I don't have a problem with it. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm, the viewers are probably saying, oh boy, I don't really wanna make the food. It's not difficult when you see how healthy it is and when I get mm. those testimonies from people mm. and they're sending me pictures of their, their dogs and cats and the transformation of their personality as well as their physical health, it's worth it. You can freeze it, make it in advance, have it for the week, have it for two weeks. So it's really not that difficult. So again, I would answer that by saying the best way is to make your own. And as far as treats and stuff, carrots. One of my number one suggestions mm. is carrots. Give your dogs organic carrots. And even if they don't like that initially, they will eventually, it's like a baby, just continue to keep or a child just continue to keep introducing and reintroducing. Cut up apple with the skin, pears, cucumbers. This is phenomenal, those top mm -hmm. four. Yeah, and believe it or not, slice mango, um, watermelon. These are great snacks, but to kind of chew on a carrot or some cucumber, they love to sit there. I know Milky Way does, and Peanut, when he was here, it was his favorite, favorite, favorite snack. I mean, we eat like three or four of them a day. And Milky Way is following in his brother's footsteps with that. And that's not Milky Way, the candy bar. It's Milky Way is the name no. of the dog. <laughs> Milky Way is my, my English and, cream golden retriever. Yes, yes. definitely and, love the candy bar. And because a lot of dog and cat food also have a lot of the processed sugars in them. Why is yeah. that harmful for the animals is, I mean, just oh, like yeah. it's harmful for us, right? It's just absolutely it's, really the same difference because you see the body of, of an animal and a human runs on glucose. Yeah. The brain converts that glucose into glycogen and the brain, you know, is the function organ, the most functional organ for every organ system in the body, again, with animals too, but we don't want refined sugar. So that's right. the sugar that you're, you're looking at that's dangerous because you know, you're going to, you're now looking at, um, you know, different types of cancers, refined sugar from the sugar bowl, you know, diabetes, even 
diabetes and animals, dogs and cats, it's rampant yeah. today. And yeah. again, sugar can be like a hidden filler, which is, is, is detrimental to the health. So you definitely want to avoid that. And if you're making your own animal food, then you're going to be in control of the ingredients and you can leave that out. But do keep in mind that raw honey is antimicrobial and maple syrup, phenomenal for dogs and cats. Wow. So, yes, That's really good. healthy to get rid of, ward off bad bacteria. Very good. So now, Tony Jean, it's starting to get to be summertime, right? Which means more bugs attaching themselves to the dogs, the cats, yeah. right? Um, and that can cause a lot of itching. <laughs> um, yes. what, what is something natural that you recommend for, for yeah. the, yeah. So first off, the, the itching can go in a couple of different categories, but as far as a bug repellent, because there's, there's, there's reasons for itching, you know, there could be uh, multiple reasons, and I'll cover that in two seconds, but as far as a bug repellent, you know, when you go to a, a veterinarian uh, or you go to <clears throat> recommend a, a pet store to get, you know, bug repellent, most of them are highly carcinogenic. Wow. And although you put them on the front line, just as you would an essential oil is what I'm going to explain in a moment. You know, you put it on the front line, they're, they're not going to ingest it, which is true. They're not going to touch it. Um, but that is that, that carcinogenic bug repellent is actually going to cause health issues later on in life because it's going seeping into the bloodstream. And they're using it every six months for their whole life. And you wonder why there's, this is partly a big reason why there's so many uh, types of cancers with dogs and cats today. Again, I say partly because there are other factors. Sure. So you definitely want to go <clears throat> a 100% all natural, organic, essential oil based. Now, a lot of the viewers may be saying, yeah, but essential oils could be toxic. Right, but that's why you put it on the front line. Because when you put it on the front line, they have no access to it because it goes, you know, behind the head. Wait, and just, the Tony Jane, just so, clarify for a moment. What do you yes. mean front line? What do you mean? Because if I'm wondering, they might be wondering too. What does that exactly. mean? Exactly. A lot of people will ask that. So the front line is pretty much the spine area to the tail, the top of the tail, and from the back of the neck, even on the head a little bit, because your animal is not going to typically be scratching that area or be exposed to it and, you know, put his paw in his mouth. Because again, it is true, a lot of essential oils, not all of them, but a lot of them can be harmful to your animal. But remember, they're not getting it if you're applying it the correct way. And when you apply it to them, you're avoiding not only that, but you're also not having to worry about it being, uh, you know, going into the bloodstream and causing cancer or any health issue later on in life because it's not carcinogenic. It's natural. It's safe. It's God made. So you're 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 giving a great benefit to, to your, your animal, and you're not having to worry about any kind of ticks or fleas. Peppermint oil is wonderful. Yeah. Lavender oil is wonderful. <clears throat> Geranium oil is wonderful. And you could use raw apple cider vinegar. You could put like 10 drops of each with some water and some raw apple cider vinegar. And there's no real ra uh, ratio of ingredients or a set recipe, but um, you know, it smells pretty, but yet a little sour because of the vinegar, but you should apply it about two to three times a day or just before they're going out. And it's, it's wonderful and it works and you don't have to worry about any harmful side mm -hmm. effects. And the bugs do not mm -hmm. like that combination. Very, very good. This is so helpful. So we only have five minutes, Tony Dean, and I want to try to get as much as we can in here. But let's talk for a moment about um, toys, animal toys, because I think a lot of people don't even think about the toys that their animals play with. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Are there some unhealthy toys out there? That, yeah. Lisa, I have seen with my own eyes where I bought dog toys in the past when I didn't know 100% where those dog toys would actually say um, potentially fatal if swallowed. Why would the manufacturer of these, these companies produce this stuff for an animal? Yeah. I mean, this is bizarre, but they put that on there to save them, their butt, but not yeah. you or your animal. So you want to look for stuff that are, you know, that do say um, plant sourced and non-toxic. You don't just want non-toxic because there are certain toxins that they'll be approved and they're really toxic. Mm. So you definitely want plant source. You also want to look for ones that will say words like um, olive oil leaf or olive wood. This is very important or just olive wood. Mm -hmm. And this is completely non-toxic and your animal can chew away. There is a great company called West Paw and they have a whole bunch of different types of dog and cat toys that are wonderful and you don't have to worry about anything toxic. I personally use them myself and highly recommend them. 
Very, very good. Tony Jean, I just have to say, my goodness, this time went so fast. And, you know, not only have you helped so many multitudes of people with their health, but now you've got all these testimonials about animals that you've helped as well. And it's just, it's awesome. And I, I can't commend you enough. I'm so grateful and thankful for you, as I know so many other people are. So I know you have a lot of animal success stories as well. Could you just share one off the top of your list real quick? It's hard to pick, but I'm going to pick Buggles because Buggles is in the book. Um, Buggles. There's, a couple, there's a couple in the book. Buggles is a pug, uh, Boston Terrier mix. I got tongue tied there for a moment. So a pug Boston Terrier mix. And she, she's female, um, her dad, uh, Joe, took, to, took her to me a couple of years ago. And she was suffering from seizure disorder. And there was no, no hope with the... Uh, with this, the dog just kept having multiple uh, seizures, which is very common, unfortunately, in dogs and cats today because of the diet, the vaccines, you know, the repeated antibiotics and stuff that are given, the steroids, it's, it's heart-wrenching, and the food. So with that said, just to speed up the story, because the testimony is written by the owner in the book um, with the picture of Buggles, such a cute doggy. The dog was really declining, and um, we just cleaned up the diet. We changed everything. Buggles today, just to get to the testimony, is has not had a uh, seizure in almost two years. He's really walking and is like a baby again. I mean, Joe told me that his dog is like a puppy now and going for long walks, just completely normal, not sleeping or oversleeping. Sleeping is fine for a dog, of course, but not overly sleeping and because your dog has a lot of energy now and a great diet, loves the fruits and vegetables, <laughs> loves the healthier source of meats. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to say Buggles. <laughs> Tony Jean, thank you for sharing that with us. And I just want to just mention to you again, you can grab the book on Amazon. I definitely recommend if you don't have all three of them, grab all three of them on because you need to be healthy as well, right? <coughs> and for your pets as well. And if you go on Amazon and you just type in Tony Jean Kolpinski, um, and if someone could, maybe I could even type it right here real quick. Um, Tony Jean Kolpinski, right? And then I think, I hope it went. Anyway, you can just look on Amazon. Yep, there's your name. And just type her name in and her books will come right up. But I highly recommend it. Again, third time best selling author. And in this book, you're going to discover the importance of hormones, right? Uh, find safer alternatives to spraying and neutering. Learn the truth about vaccination and its protocol. Understand which supplements are optimal, right, for your fur babies. That's right. Right, and receive nutritious recipes for your beloved pets derived from God's menu. Woo! Amen. <laughs> Woo! Amen. That's like a boom, drop the mic. No, I love that. So, um, Tony Jean, quickly, we, we're just about out of time, but yes. you also do consultations as well as speaking yes. to different organizations, and you work with people virtually all around the globe. How can people contact you? So, um, so first and foremost, people, people can t contact me through stopbattlingdisease.com. It's actually the first part of the title of each book, stopbattlingdisease.com. I can also be found on Facebook and Instagram. Excellent. And I do uh, offer, I have a private pra practice, and it doesn't matter where you are or where I am because I do all virtual and telephone appointments around the world. And I work with both humans and animals. And I do want to say my book was dedicated to my beloved Peanut, who will be with the Lord two years in August. And that's he and I on the cover. So I just wanted to mention that tonight. It is so beautiful. And look at that. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful. And it says the, <laughs> the most beautiful love story. Oh, I know. Your heart. Um so, Tony Jean, I want to thank you for being our special guest tonight. What a wealth of information you are. You are such a blessing to so many. And I just want to, you know, just again, if you are struggling with your health, um, you know, Tony Jean is a woman of God, first and foremost, and she's got nutrition knowledge that is just amazing. If I have a question, I go to Tony Jean. I mean, she's amazing. And and there's such a wealth of information. That's <laughs> to me. Spiritual, right? And, nutrition, and nutritionally. Right? It's just, yeah. 
And so, but anyway, I just want to thank you for being our special guest tonight. Again, I highly recommend that you jump on Amazon, grab these books while they're available and change your life, change your health, change your pet's life, right? So I want to thank you for watching the Victorious Life TV broadcast. And Tony Jean, thank you again. I love you. you. I, we I love, love you. you. We bless you in Jesus' name. And make sure you share this everywhere. Because people that have pets, they need this information. So please share this broadcast everywhere you can. Let's advance God's kingdom together. We love you. We bless you. And you. see you next time. All right. Good night.